Hello, well it's um, been a while since I've done any sort of like car review things and I thought seeing I've had this thing over a year now it's probably best I do a, uh, a long term test on the Dacia Logan LPG conversion I mean Dacia I probably should have done this a lot earlier but it's just been busy with stuff but we got a few things to cover with this car because I, I didn't just jump straight in and buy a Dacia Logan and convert it to LPG I mean Dacia. The reason I ended up with one of these was the uh, taxi firm I worked for had been running a few of them for quite a while and uh, I've got an earlier version, an earlier video on my channel, um, Dacia Logan LPG conversion test, where I actually rented one of their, their, their cars, like this taxi firm's cars for the week to do the job. And uh, at the time I was I was driving the, uh, the Nissan Leaf. Oh, in case you're wondering what this is, uh, for long term viewers on my channel, I thought I'd just put the cockhead cam on straight away so I can cut in cockhead cam views as well as dash cam views, as, as well as GoPro clone on the back window views in this video, just to keep it good flowing a bit better. But anyway, back to the to the subject at hand. Uh, Dacia Logan LP uh, M uh, M C V maximum capacity vehicle LPG conversion. I mean, Dacia. Um, not really available from Dacia. I mean, Dacia. Um, in the UK, but when I've had a look through the the, the actual um, you know the the manual you get with the car, the car's manual. Um, it has got uh, LPG versions in there, like options and things for them. Like it shows you where the lights, you know, if you're driving an LPG one, the lights are here, type of thing. So I gather in, in on mainland Europe, you do, you can buy one of these from Dacia. I mean, Dacia. Already converted to LPG, but in this country, they don't sell them. So what did I do? I, I bought this one. It was an X demonstrator, it had 3,000 miles on it. Oh, 4, 3, 9 something, just under 4,000 I think it was. I bought it off, off them, it's, it's, the, it's the Lorette version, so it's the top of the range one with the, like, the fancy radio and the, it's got the um, cruise control and speed limit, uh, all round electric windows. So you know, it, it's, it's fairly well equipped. Um, so I ended up buying that six month old, under 4,000 miles on it. Took it straight to the firm that does the LPG conversions for the taxi firm I work for and got them to convert it. Um, I also, because I've heard that, I mean, a lot of people who, who hear about LPG uh, and people have talked to me uh, that, that, that there's all these like uh, what you would call like scare stories and things about oh, don't get one of them, your engine will blow up. But uh, Phoenix, the tax, Phoenix Taxis, the taxi firm I work for, I've, I've see, seen these, they've um, had well over. 100,000 miles plus on them or more 150,000 miles plus and they've been running fine and the reason they're running fine and the engines haven't blown up yet is if you're going to get an LPG convert you know your car converted to LPG you have to get something called the valve loop system fitted and what the valve loop does is it stops the valves seizing up and wrecking your engine that's why it was invented because that's a that's a problem with with LPG it's such a dry fuel so um, yeah, I've had that fitted and I'm now he heading towards 40,000 miles after a year with it. So 35,000 plus and I've, I've not been taxiing as hard as some taxi drivers would. I could have been, I could have easily done 50,000 miles if I was doing 12 hour shifts and putting in all the hours. But you know, it's my car. I've got other, you know, activities that I'm doing for income and uh, to keep me occupied. So I'm not taxiing as many hours as, as a lot of taxi drivers would. So. I could have easily, yeah, had 50,000 miles on it by now, but uh, green flax are, I don't. Um, but it's, it's coming up to uh, one and a half years, and oh, we've got people behind me, and I've got people in front of me, and I'm just going to pull over for the moment, because I hate yabbering when there's people watching. So we'll just pull over for a bit, and let these idiots pass. Then I can YouTube normally again without spectators there you go how's that so what were we saying 
so yeah I, I, I could have easily have done 50 60 thousand miles on this if I was putting in all the hours I could tax in but I've been kind of you know conservative in the hours I've been doing just doing enough to, to pay the bills and to keep my other activities going now um next subject I've got a list here so I, I wouldn't blabber out with, out with nothing um, all right yeah well we're going to do the cruise control on this I think the newer one's got a slightly different cruise control setup because it doesn't got the um the cruise controls um on and off and uh, speed limit are selected down here anymore I don't think and uh, I've seen in the brochure for the for the newer Logan that it seems a bit different down here so I think it might be a bit more conventional the newer version of the Logan for the um, where the cruise control stock is usually around here this one buttons down there and the controls are on the steering wheel which I quite like actually that the main cruise control um, are like two big fat buttons either side of the steering wheel you've got your cancel your re-engage here yeah, plus and minus speed and per hour here as well so it really makes it quite an easy I would say this this one of the simplest cruise controls to operate I, I was quite put off with it to begin with with it being down there but um, now that I've gotten used to it I think hmm for a manual cruise control this is quite a good setup because you, you basically you just do everything with your thumbs I mean now I want to do 30 miles just hit that 35 mile an hour cancel could we do a bed foot on the brake turning it's great around town the, the setup so I haven't actually sat in the newer the, the facelift version of this with the which has like the LED running lights and everything on the front which this one doesn't I like LED running lights but anyway um, this one yeah you kind of like that and I'm off it's great for you're behind someone in the 30 zone you want to do 30 but the person in front keeps they're obviously trying to stay in 30 mile an hour zone manually with the right foot which we all know is kind of impossible engines modern engines don't like don't like uh, don't have the sound to them that they want to dawdle at 30 mile an hour we've all crept up to 40 in the 30 zone doing it manually which is why you need cruise control but I found when I've been behind someone who's trying to stick the 30 in a 30 zone in this car I can quite easily just stick it on go down a few miles up a few miles and, the, and, the, and you know I'm sitting here perfectly relaxed feet up like that not doing anything go up a bit there we're just increasing in there 31 you can see that 32 just increases it and then just decreases it so I'm on a country road here I'm having to slow up and speed down you know if I want to go faster put the foot on the accelerator till I get to say 40 there and then press plus plus and it'll keep it up yeah so I'm now going to do these next few bends without using the accelerator we'll just slow down gradually on the on the uh, cruise control here and put it in where, it in where it should be a minus on there but I've worn it off with overuse we're going to cancel the cruise control as we drift into this corner then we'll just press R to re-engage it it should pick it up again yep yeah, just not picking up the speed so we'll add a few miles per hour there and it should pick up again with no feet driving with no feet so yeah I'm quite impressed with uh, with the uh, setup of this cruise control I quite like it as a basic cruise control obviously if you follow my channel and things you know I would rather have a Tesla with autopilot because a Tesla with autopilot you just tell it the speed limit you tell it and then you just go bing bing and it does um, what's called adaptive cruise control and I'll do the speed limit or whatever the car in front is doing now on full autopilot you can tell it to change lanes and everything it does the steering but I quite like just the adaptive cruise control makes life a lot easier um, when you you know you can just steer and you're not worried about with, with adaptive cruise control you can not worry about having to Stop and start and stop the cruise control for the driver in front slowing up and speeding down. The car will do it for you. Uh, and then you also remove the, 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 the worry about speed limits. I mean, you know, me that is for me, that is the main reason I like cruise control. I'm no longer stressing 
about looking at the speedo all the time when I should be looking straight ahead because I'm worried about getting a speeding ticket. I just, oh, that's the speed now, set it to that and it'll do it. That's the benefit of cruise control. If, if, you, if you're a person who keeps getting speeding fines, you need to learn to use cruise control. Simple as. I just want to put in there that obviously these are seat covers. It's not like that underneath. That's the that's the standard trim that you get. But yeah, uh, yeah. I just put these on because obviously I'm a taxi driver. I have to deal with general public who wee, poo, and throw up a lot. So uh, do all sort of the unseemly things in in other people's vehicles when they're in copious and whatnot. So uh, yeah, these are waterproof. If you poo, pee, whatever, throw up, you can sit in your own stuff until until I get there get rid of here and then I just whip these off and shove them in the washing machine. What other topics have I got on my piece of paper? Um, oh yeah, the um, the, newer, the newer version of this has a few extra options on it because uh, this one, I'll just drive normally again without the cruise control because we're not in the 30s zone right now, we're in the lovely countryside of Northumberland, bleak though it is. Um, the newer version of the, this, the Lorette the, 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 the the Lorette spec that I've got here um, has uh, the media nav system as standard it has the cruise control still as standard although it's a bit different um, but it also has rear parking sensors as standard as well the new Lorette version um, there is also which I haven't I'd like to have a test drive of I might I might see if I can get a test drive of it but there is also a stepway version of this if you don't know what the stepway version is there's, there's a um, the, the smaller car that this this is an extended version of the Dacia Sendero, I guess longer wheelbase, but basically the same car. Um, just stretched a bit the wheelbase to make it into a quite spacious um, estate for the money. Um, but if you were to, but if you look at the Lorette, there is a stepway version, which is like it's a one that's got a beefier suspension and it's upright. I don't know if it's, I think there's a four-wheel drive version of it as well. But apparently there is now a stepway version of the Logan, which. I just noticed today as I was checking up on changes to this on the Dacia website before I started filming the video. Um, so the stepway version basically a bit higher up, chunks but softer. I imagine that the suspension might be a bit less harsh than this over the bumpy stuff. It might be good for places like where I work, like Ashington, with the speed bumps everywhere and pit potholes and that. Might be a good option for me next, the stepway version of this. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a stepway version of it. Um, but also there's the rear parking sensors included. I had to get my rear parking sensors installed myself. I had to go to a, get it done myself. Cost a hundred quid, whatever. But you need, this car does actually need them because it is quite long compared to most cars. Um, yes, it's the cheapest estate car you can buy in the UK new. But it's also uh, the longest, quite long as well. And uh, when you find reversing into spaces, it's like you're, it's like you're, it's longer than a lot of Audis, and I, I'm, I'm not sure if it's longer than a Tesla Model S. Uh, it might be as, le as the same length as it. It's obviously not as wide. It's a lot narrower. Right. What other subjects have we got on here to cover? Let's not read while I'm driving. I'll pull over for a second. Then the cruise control demonstration. All right, we need to cover. We need to uh, cover fuel consumption, right? And then we've got reliability. We've went over the valve lube. Already done that. Right. So first call is the uh, the fuel consumption. Let's get onto that. Start driving again, shall we? I might um, just check that the rear camera is still recording. So. We'll just pop this on there. Give me a second. And it out with the with the dickhead cam. Oh, if I don't stall it. Now do you see that? I pulled it lifted off the clutch and I stalled it, but the uh stop start technology put the air uh, car back in 
start the car back up for me. That's another thing you've got with uh, with this. I mean, it's a it's a really cheap car, but it's got stop start technology. That's something you would pay. You'd expect on like a higher like a you know like a high end vehicle, isn't it? Not a ten grand cheap estate car. Anyway, I'm just going to check the rear camera is still recording. While we're here, we can get some nice scenic shots of the car with the cockhead cam. It's just still recording. Only one way to find out. Yep, still recording. That's good, isn't it? How much battery is left on it? Not much. I'm gonna to have to stop this and uh, change the battery, I think. Like that. There you go. Let's change the battery on it. <coughs> yeah, the good thing about this, this camera lasts a while. This one lasts a while, but this uh, cheap GoPro clone doesn't. <laughs> so. But we've got a few different extra batteries here for it. So I think we're best to uh, stop that recording there. You yeah, know, we can always we can just edit out the bad bits, can't we? It's the beauty of video editing. I remember, you know, when I was like a teenager, back in the early 90s, late 80s, and uh, I had a VHSC camcorder and uh, you'd have to plan each shot because you couldn't edit, you couldn't after, I mean I had to like basically you know, I always used to do stupid fight scene movies with my friends and that but you had to like beep, right we'll do the camera there, put one shot, one, you know, plan the shot, plan the shot, plan the shot, right we'll do it now and if you'd messed it up then you would just have to live with it because you couldn't edit it I mean yeah you could get two video recorders together but it would ruin the quality the quality would go down in every pass and everything but not now you could just sit here and film rubbish for hours and uh, edit all up. There's something reasonably watchable later on. Right, so anyway, that's back on again. We'll set it off recording. Beep, right, that's for the sync for me later on with editing. Remember those brick things you used to use as a year taller to figure out what shape goes into what? Remember that cliff? Aye, I remember. Anyway, there we go, she's back. There's your nice big boot by the way. Bit dirty, I know. But you know, I'm a taxi driver and humanoids are dirty things. The people that I carry around a lot. Anyway, somewhere in the brochure is how big that boot is. It's quite an enormous boot. That looks to be about where it was before. Yep. So, what I was saying about the um, that is, even though I've only spent about, I've only used about five, ten pounds worth of fuel. Um, I went over this on the um, the video I did when I, before when I tested the Phoenix version of this car, like the the one week where I rented one. Um, it was doing the same thing, and I've done like a few little LPG vlogs and that. Well, this one's doing the same thing and what it is is it's because it's a digital fuel meter it, it keeps thinking you're using more fuel than you are so i've i come to a point where i'm it's saying it's empty it's telling me to fill up and you go at the petrol station thinking all right i've used all that fuel already how come how come because i'm on lpg i shouldn't be using it you go at the petrol station you f and it only costs you 10 pounds to fill up and it says it's full again so there's there's some sort of issue with using lpg in that fuel meter on there it keeps thinking you're using more fuel than it is and it, it loses track of where the top is or something and yeah this one the other one and I, I've heard other drivers of these kept complaining that they have to keep putting fuel in I said have you filled it to the top this is the other taxi drivers of these who've talked to us and I, oh, why and says well because that doesn't track the fuel properly it doesn't track the petrol in the tank properly it's just it's estimated on miles There's, it must it, it must be like you get the top of the fuel and a sensor says it's full but there's no there's no like spirit level whatever thing in there measuring how much fuel is actually in it it just 
beep a few and then it estimates how much fuel you've got left so or something like that I don't it's a computer it's a computer dash fault I think because I know that's not half full I know that's I've only used about five ten pounds worth of fuel out of the 40 50 quid it costs to fill this thing right but uh, we were talking about fuel economy weren't you weren't we so um yeah how much fuel how much has this been costing me to run um in LPG well um most of my shifts not so busy shifts around about 100 miles I'll do in six to eight hours um, maybe it's a bit more on a Friday Saturday night I might do 150 200 miles an hour when it's really busy or if I suddenly get a lot of long runs if I'm doing like I mean I do account jobs for the NHS here I do account jobs for prison service and things like that if I'm on a really long job for them I might suddenly clock up a lot of miles one day you know maybe it's a run from uh, run from one hospital to like the Anik hospital down to Crompton hospital 40 odd miles and back again with, with samples or whatever I might even do a you know go to the prison and bring a prisoner to the a e &E with the two prison guards wait outside there for hours and bring them back and uh, the a &E's like down at Crompton where the prison's all the way up in Northumberland so that's another 50 mile there and back so I might do that sort of run it might be a Friday Saturday night where I'd have more runs because it's busier then so going between the shifts a not so busy shift I might do 80 to 100 miles a busier shift I might do 200 200 plus and the difference between those two is to fill up on a lower end not so busy shift would cost me about seven pounds of LPG if I'm going to do a longer shift I'm probably talking about I'd really drain the tank now when I come to where like the Morrisons and Morpeth where I usually fill up or if I go to the Phoenix office or wherever where they work and get it cheap um, if I'm paying like the Morrisons price it's about between £7 for the lower end shift like the Morrisons fuel um, and the Morrisons fuel if it's uh, a higher shift when I'm doing like 200 plus miles you're probably talking like £17 to fill it up with LPG so uh, I've worked that out as um, it's probably costing me about 10 pence a mile in LPG to run this thing and that's not driving anally slower and then I'm sticking okay I'm sticking to speed limits in, in towns and that which a few drivers probably are getting uh, you'll see them right up your tail but I'm doing 30 this is my career I want to preserve my clean license etc um, but uh, if you're in but if I'm in a 70 zone, I am doing 70, I am not taking my time getting to 70, I'm putting my foot down to get to 70, I'm leaving lots of cars standing that are tootling along, not speeding up so fast, trying to save the, 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 you know, the petrol or whatever, the diesel they're on, but this, it's cheap enough, I can put my foot down and not worry so much about the consequences of, um, you know, needing to, needing to use the power of doing this, basically, I want to accelerate a bit, I'm not worried about that because it's not going to cost me anything more <laughs> I'm still going to get on average 10 pence per mile or less and, and I've, I've verified that on longer trips I'm pro probably if I'm not driving round town it's probably you know stop start round town stuff um, if I'm driving round town and yeah about 10 pence a, mi a mile but in longer trips if I'm like say I took family to like Tarpon Tarn over, the, over in Cumbria once you know, family and the kids and whatever. That run was was about a good hundred miles plus. It's about 70, 80 miles each way, I think it was. So yeah, we're talking about 140, 150 miles. But it was like just on the cruise control, 60 and the 60 road, 70 and 70. You know, car doing the doing the I wasn't often on the accelerator, the car was being efficient on the longer run and that one cost me when I got back after I filled it before I went and when I got back I filled it up again to see how long it would, how much it would be and I think we did actually more than that because I remember gallivanting round showing them different places as well on the way so yeah that one was a it was a good probably 140 150 mile run I would say and got back it cost me less than nine pound it was eight pounds something just under a nine pound to, to fill it up it was like eight pound eighty six or something like that so yeah you can if you're going to drive uber e economically i can imagine you would get a lot less than 10 pence a mile now when you could compare that to what what is a nissan leaf meant to be so does some say two pence a mile or six pence a mile or something like that? i don't know 
the fact that um, the, the I mean, if you the Nissan Leaf that I was driving, the one that I started first started taxiing in, was a Gen One, which was having difficulty doing more than 60 mile on a charge. Its battery was degenerating fast. Um, that just to have the flexibility of being able to do up to 200 miles on one tank of energy just changed my um, just totally changed my outlook for doing this this task that I'm doing now this this, this taxiing that I'm doing um, right so that's the fuel cupboard I think what else have we got let's pull over because I can't read and drive at the same time it's highly illegal as well right have a look Oh, the amount of time I've had it, and then I think we can wrap this video up probably after that. But yeah, the amount of time I've had it, we'll, we'll get started driving again. So yeah, the amount of time I've had it. What was it? One, I got it in February 2016, it's now July 2017, so it's 15, 15 uh, months I've had it. Up to four, I've done about 35,000, 36,000 miles on it. Um, what issues have we had? I haven't covered that, that's one of the things I had to cover. Um, issues I've had with it were mainly with the LPG installation and that was nothing to do with this. Yeah. I mean, Dacia. Yeah, that was in, in, in the LPG installers, but they did warn me that it's it's not a fight, it's a fine art LPG getting it getting it right. So they did warn me before I said, you may have to come back a few times for it and adjust, adjust pipes, just sensors and everything. So. I think the first month or two I had it, I went back to them about three, three times I think because there was the, the first time it, I remember filling up with LPG and then coming out to it the next morning smell of, <laughs> smelled like there was a gas leak outside it was basically coming out, the, the, the pipe at the back wasn't tightened up so I had to take it back I had to tighten things, readjust and then a the time after that I think I put it in one of my LPG vlogs um, the actual sensor came off because I'd run it low until the valve lube had went run out and uh, so I just say all right I'll finish the rest of this shift on petrol because I need the, I wanted to burn through some of the petrol because I didn't want to I don't like leaving petrol in the tank for too long because it apparently it uh, goes out of date or whatever so yeah I'll just finish this shift off at uh, on, on petrol I thought anyway when I came to put LPG in again it wouldn't go back the LPG and what had happened was when I put the valve lube in so I could start using LPG again, it wouldn't go back to LPG. And what happened is when the when the when it sensed that the valve lube was low, it stopped using LPG, the system cut in, but it, it, it the sensor was broken and it wasn't sensing that the valve lube was back in there. So I had to take it back back in to get the sensor replaced. Which now seems to work fine. But as a precaution, I don't I try not to run it too long on petrol if I can help it, just in case it sets it out of sync again. But um LPG issues. That's about that's that's about the main the main reliability issue that there was with it, which has got nothing to do with Dacia. I think he means Dacia. Or the or this model of vehicle, as again, it's just the uh, the LPG conversion, isn't it? Um, maintenance. It's cost me first first service oil change. I took it to Dacia. I think I mean Dacia. They got the stamp in the book. I think it was like less less than a hundred quid. Second service needed uh, new brakes and everything, so I think it was like 190 or something. I don't know. For some reason, I needed new front discs because they were warped, so we got them replaced. So I think after that, it was like, uh... oh, that's what I did. They were wanting 240 days here for it. I mean, gotcha. And I thought, hang on, I'll get a second opinion. So I went to Quick Fit and they said, oh, we'll do it for 190. So I've now got like. I mean, the way I'm looking at it is, I'm probably out of warranty anyway for getting the LPG conversion. So I thought, hmm, only got 20,000 miles left on it before the, the 60,000 mile warranty, three year warranty or 60,000 miles that you get with the car is up. And I've got a really slow Audi driver. Have, have, have you ever seen that before? An Audi driver going uber slow in front of you before. What the hell's up with that? So um, yeah, I went, I went to quick fit, got them to fit them for 190 of the brakes, the brake discs. Um, that's about the only issue I've, I've got with it is the warping of the disc but I think that's got something to do with my driving style nearly every car <laughs> I get into and I drive I warp the discs I think it's what it is is I'll hit bumps and I'll not get when I come to I 
occasionally to, when they've come to, oh, you might need your wheels realigned when you've had tyres changed, but I don't bother with it. And so, yeah, get your wheels realigned if you get your tyres changed. You won't warp discs all the time. Well, it's, it's, I mean, I can't understand it how I've had so many cars with warped front discs because uh, maybe it's just having this big, hefty person in the front of the car needing a stopping power. <laughs> about the only like issue but it's no different to, as I say it's going to be no different to most cars I've had that's had that issue so I think it's just got something to do with me something with my driving style perhaps but I've managed it I mean I've been really gentle braking and everything the only time I mean I mean there there was no there was no shuddering so I think the brakes are fine now uh, I've just been really really careful embedding these ones in this thing we'll get some speed up here See if we get any jutter. There's a lovely Northumberland countryside. So, uh, let's. Fine, no problem with that whatsoever. A lot of the time the juddering is just ABS kicking in when it's in the wet, isn't it? Right, so I think that's about that covered as well. It's not really anything else I can I can say about about this car. Um, if I was going to get another one. I don't know if I'd bother getting the LPG conversion, that's that's the thing I was going to say. Why? Well, I've seen a lot of taxi drivers from other firms and just people buy, I mean these have become really popular these cars just because they're a bargain, bargain price car this for such a roomy little car, the massive boot. Um, but yeah, I think I would just get the diesel one next. I'd pay, instead of paying the, the, the like the the grand or whatever it is to get a properly converted LPG, you might as well just spend the grand or whatever and get the get the diesel version because um, the diesel one does apparently up to I mean 80 miles per gallon. I mean believe that if you want or not because we know what it's like with diesel at the moment. Manufacturers claiming more miles per gallon than than they than they should. But um, oh, I did actually do that. I did. I did. A, I got one of these for a, this was that was um. Yeah, that was before. That was before I rented the uh, Phoenix LPG converted one for a week. Uh, a few months before that, I did a. Um, I borrowed one of these. Or I got a four-hour test drive of one of these from Dacia themselves, a diesel one. I remember going from um, Newcastle across to Carlisle and across the border, then up around past. Um, I can't remember, right way up with the Jedburgh and everything and all the way back down. It must have been a good hundred odd mile, 150 miles or something. And we did the whole thing for like roughly, maybe it's a bit more than what it cost an LPG. I think it was about 15 quid, 15, 16 quid, maybe it's 20. Was it 20? I don't know. I'll have to look at the video again, see how much it cost to fill it up. Well, I uh, put... So look, 20 litres in, it costs £24.38. Um, but yeah, we did the whole video, did that and uh, so possibly if I was going to do get one of these again, maybe the newer one with the media system, media nav system there and the LED running lights which I really like. Um, yeah, I would probably go for the diesel. So that, I mean, in the UK, that would probably be the one I would recommend. Unless you're working for a, a like a company like me, who knows, who's got a lot of experience of of someone who uh, of, of like a company that will convert to LPG reliably for you, and you've got a few of them already, um, and you can and you, you know you get like extra cheap LPG from the office type of thing. Then then it's probably a good option like it was for me. But if you're working for another firm, just get one that, you know, if you work for another taxi firm or you just want something cheap diesel with lots of room and cruise control and things, um, yeah, get the diesel version. So, uh, what else is to say? I think I've covered just about everything in, the, in my long-term review. So it's just the usual, like, uh, remember to, to click and subscribe to my channel. And um, if, you, if you look at the uh, banner at the top of my channel, um, there are some uh, links in the, just under, in the picture underneath the uh, underneath this car next to the P100D Tesla. Basically, on there you've got a link to my Amazon page, where you can help your favourite charity and, and my favourite charity as well. It's the uh, Clifford Rutley Society to help me buy a Tesla, which will be good for everyone. I mean, I'd have a Tesla, 
and uh, you should have me making lots of videos about it. Just think about that, it'd be lovely, wouldn't it? So uh, go on there, buy some of my books to help fund that cause. You know it's a good one, I do too. For now, I'd like to say once more, thanks again for watching, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye!